guys, Jay here. Welcome to Models and Memories Weekly, episode 38. Models and Memories is a show about nothing and it is filmed in front of a live studio audience. And stay tuned all the way till the end to see a montage of painted minis courtesy of the EOB Complete community. This is a show where I talk about my painting, modeling, and working experiences from the week and I end every episode with a story. Now you might be thinking to yourself, Jay, you put out three YouTube videos a week and you stream every single night. How? Could you possibly have more to say? Well, I do. And here goes. This week, I was perusing the Games Workshop festive guide as I wanted to see all of the neat, wonderful things that I could get my hands on, like one of the 10 trillion paints available from Warhammer. And I found, while flipping through this, which actually, this is kind of a cute book, but the, there's activities. There's actually a really, really cute paint guide for the Red Gabo. It's actually pretty nice. I want to talk about the gift guides. These gift guides are insanity. Cause like you'd think like, okay, so what is the gift guide gonna be? Probably some of like the, the more value products, things that someone might actually pick up, like a, you know, a grandma or an uncle. Like, you know, the parents know the kids, they know like, okay, he collects Necrons. Well, maybe we'll get him a box of Necrons. But uh, this stuff is wild. The gift guides start with a lot of the box sets, like like the Age of Sigmar Start Collecting Extremist Edition, the one with terrain, the big one, 165 bones. The Elite Edition, 99 bones for 40K. And then it gets even worse. Uh, some of the box games, Aeronautica Imperialis, 90 bucks, Blood Bowl Season 2, 140, the Lord of the Rings, which I didn't even know had a starter set, 158 buckos. And then they a little, a little more, a little more fire, a little more fuel on the fire. On the last page of the gift guide, they have just the most expensive products they sell. Like Kragnos, The End of Empires, a Age of Sigmar Centaur Fella, 160 bucks. The Chaos Knight Desecrator, 150 bones. The New Dragons for Age of Sigmar, 150 bucks. And the, the famous Age of Sigmar Mega Bad Chaos Dude, the Archeon Ever Chosen, 165 bucks. It is absolute madness like you can't this is clearly this is clearly for children like i don't think anyone would argue that and that's that's outrageous that's the 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 picks are wild and then on the last page the stocking stuffers which finally i thought we were going to get to the cutesy little little you know good value models that i would have put on in here we get a whole bunch of swag Sto uh, 40k stockings, keychains, the Bandai Chibi advent calendar, all of this stuff is super, super dumb. And I actually don't think, like I, some of these things are cute and maybe some people would want them, but I think most of these are a skip. But what is not a skip is the Eons of Battle cookie cutter. This is cool, these things are not. It's, there's clearly a difference here. We are making and selling these and they are super cute. So we did a run of them last year and we had some really, really great success. It's so cute, you guys. We had a video where we used this cookie cutter to make some adorable gingerbread space marines and we are making them available for sale again. And if you're a Patreon supporter of ours, you're gonna get a little discount, so. Think think about that if you're thinking about, if you were in, if you were in the mood for making a festive 40k cookie related purchase, I think that this is the obvious choice. The wonderful Space Marine cookie cutter printed in wonderful food safe filament is super, super neat. And this is not a Primaris Space Marine. So there's no reason to hate on this product. This is a classic old school Space Marine. And so uh, pick up yours while supplies lasts. But getting back to Games Workshop's stocking stuffers, these are all dumb. And I, had, I think that their like actual gift guide picks are super dumb too. So I have compiled my own list of appropriate Games Workshop gifts for the holiday season. And the great thing is, I'm pretty sure that if you place an order for any of these, they won't arrive on Christmas. So 
starting off the list with the Cultists of the Abyss. Some of these are, are kind of fun, like the Cultists of the Abyss. I think a lot of people don't realize that these are on the web store because they're kind of hidden. And it's hard to find anything on the web store if you're not looking for it. But this is a pack of eight cultists, the eight Chaos Cultists that were featured in Blackstone Fortress. And they look super duper dope. And they come in at $25 for eight models, which is actually pretty good by Games Workshop standards. That's around three bucks a model. And they look super duper solid. Also, you know, just, just saying, eight cultists is the exact number of cultists you need for Kill Team. So keep that in mind. But these models are absolutely dope and I think they would make little Timmy really, really happy. You know, you buy these for little Timmy and then you buy yourself the $175 Mortarian. And that way, you know, you both got a little something. Next up, the easy to build Mythetic Blight Hauler. This is a kit that I recently picked up and it is super nice. It is a nice little baseball sized tank for 25 bones. It is super duper cool to put together and it's it's a tank for 25 bucks. You're not gonna see a deal like that from Games Workshop. I don't know, ever again. <laughs> but it's a super, super nice tank. It's, it comes on the monstrous 80 millimeter base. It is very, very cool. And yeah, I just think this is a great pick and it would make a great stocking stuffer. And it would probably fit in a stocking because it comes in the Games Workshop small size box. Next up, we have to take a trip over to Age of Sigmar. So if you're a 40K only person, plug your ears now. But we got the easy to build Dreadblade Harrows. Harrows. These guys are super cool. I should pick these up because they would be wonderful to paint. But they are undead horses with undead skeleton riders with giant two-handed swords on lovely scenic bases. These guys are super duper cool. And I think Night Haunt is a wonderful thing to paint, especially if you only really do 40k stuff, because you are going to face some painting challenges that you do not often come up across. And painting these will for sure give you some brand new experiences and make you a better painter, and then you can bring those skills back to your 40k projects. But I absolutely love these guys. And the price is right. 25 bucks, two models. The price is creeping up just a little bit, but they're fairly big models. They're cavalry. So I think I think that these models are super duper nice. Again, a lovely stocking stuffer. And next up, this is a kit I recommend all the time. Once again, it's an Age of Sigmar kit, the easy to build Glaive Wraith Stalkers. This box is $15 and it comes with four gorgeous minis. They almost kind of look like Undead Skaven because they have kind of rat faces, but they look, they look so nice. They are on lovely, lovely scenic bases. I have, I think I, I might have two boxes of these guys. They're super, super awesome. And 15 bucks. You know, if, 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 if you're annoying, if you're annoying, you know, little brother or nephew, or if, if there's anyone who's like, Maybe I want to try to paint something and, and you, you know, you want to you want to help them out, but you don't want to buy them one of the real kits that cost money. 15 bucks for Glaive Wraith Stalkers. They look so cool. I think that this is one of the best things Games Workshop makes. I think that they really should make a lot more models at this price range. They used to. They used to have the when when Primaris first launched, they had the easy to build Redemptor Dreadnought, the easy to build Aggressors, easy to build Primaris Intercessors and easy to build Primaris Reavers. And those kits were excellent. Um, the, the, the Dreadnoughts and the uh, Aggressors were still kind of pricey, but the 15 bucks got you three Intercessors or three Reavers. And recently they discontinued those models, which is kind of a bummer. I hope that they make some sort of a, an easy to acquire Games Workshop 40K models in the same vein as these Glaive Wraith Stalkers. But we'll see, and by we'll see, probably not. But after those models, that's really kind of it for good deals from Games Workshop. There's a couple of other, there's the Age of Sigmar Stormcast guys for 15 bucks, eh, it's whatever. I feel like they don't look as, as nice and, and schmexy as the new, the new Stormcast that are called Thunderstrike Stormcast, Dragonfall Stormcast, Meteorite Stormcast. They're primary Stormcast and they look really, really, really good. But moving on to something that is not 40K, we got a little Catalyst Game Labs Battletech Force Pack The Inner Sphere. 
and this gets you four big stompy mech robots for Battletech, which is apparently all you need to play. I have it, I have it from some reliable Battletech sources that this is all you need, and you get four nice new Battletech models, and they have lots of lots of options. 25 bones will get you four robots uh, with a lot of variety. Some of them are very, very square. And like Robbie the Robot, or actually Robbie the Robot isn't square. He's got a lot of cur of, uh, of complex curves to his shape. But these are really, really cool. Yeah, uh, a lot of the old metal battle uh, battle tech minis, I have some. <sighs> they're uh, they're a little old, but these look pretty darn good. And for 25 bones, four models. Good deal. Good deal. Once again, stock and stopper. Moving on to a little Malifo. Malifo has tons of kits for under 25 bucks, including the Necropunks, which is three very creepy, disturbing zombie robot abominations. But they also have the Malifo. You go through their product range. The Malifo Classics is ma models that they no longer no longer really have a current place in the game they're from Malifo second edition or first edition a lot of them are metal and those models you can get some really really cool stuff for really really cheap but there's also just there's you know some really really cool stuff like again the three wonderful necropunks for $21 you know I'm not saying that other companies are better than Games Workshop but they certainly seem to be able to sell miniatures for a little bit cheaper also from Malifo, the Slurids. If you were in the mood to paint three water monsters, like some weird, like they're like salamanders that have uh, grown to monstrous sizes, the Slurids are a wonderful, wonderful choice for $21. I love Malifo. I think every Malifo miniature is an absolute banger. Some of them are pretty pricey, some of them are s somewhat pricey. I mean, there's no Martarians in the Malifo range. But for 21 bucks, three Slurids, can't really go wrong with that. And I have one final pick for my choices for Christmas, Christmas, the Christmas season. And that is hopping over to Modifius Games and picking up the Fallout Wasteland Warfare NCR Promo NCR Ranger. This guy is my most expensive pick on this list at $17 for one mini, but it's a really, really cool mini. If you love Fallout like me, you gotta get this model. The Modifius games, I have, I have a bunch of their Fallout miniatures and they're all really, really, really great. But if you just want one thing to sit on the shelf and just look at and appreciate how great Fallout New Vegas was, and a bunch of the Fallout games. This is the model to get, the NCR Ranger. I just look at this guy and I can just, I can hear the startup game monologue going in my head. It is super duper wonderful. And all the resin models that I have bought from Modifius have been excellent. The PVC, not so much. The starter box for their Wasteland Warfare game comes with PVC miniatures and they're kind of sad. I th I'm pretty sure they use the exact same sculpt and they just literally cast them in PVC instead of nice resin and it really kinda, boy, it kinda ruined them. But this model, this model is excellent and wonderful and 17 bucks, it still is not breaking the bank. It is a really, really cool model. So take that Games Workshop with your $150 and $99 and $160 and your Greeting cards for $4. And wrapping paper for $4.49. It's a little silly. Ooh, I do kind of want one of these notebooks though. That'd be kind of cool. But, ooh, uh-oh. Christmas plushies. The, uh, <laughs> the squig's been recalled. <laughs> so everybody, if you have this book, go ahead and get out a Sharpie and just sharpie out, sharpie out the squig, because it is a choking hazard. It is a choking hazard. Apparently these puff balls can fall off, which, and reasonably a plush toy could be played by, played by with an infant or a child who could hurt themselves. But uh, I have a feeling 
a lot of people are not going to be turning in their uh, recall of the plush toy and they're just going to keep it because it's fun. But good old the Games Workshop festive guide. And now you guys have my Eons of Battle festive guide. And speaking of Games Workshop, we have got to talk about what has been going on over at the Warhammer community with the Advent Engine. So Games Workshop usually does this thing where they have the rumor, the rumor mill, where they show off a, a super too close up of some part of a new model coming out. And usually they do it so that you can't quite tell what it is. And the background is just this generic steampunk design. And so usually people are like, oh, that looks maybe Skaveny, although it probably could be Chaos or maybe it's Warcry because Warcry could be anything. But recently with the Advent Engine, it seems like they are just going ahead and telling us it's Eldar and it's a lot of Eldar. On the first post, we saw clearly the tippy top of an Eldar head with an Eldar ponytail in the second Advent Engine on the second day of Games Workshop Christmas, the Advent Engine gave to me. It is clearly some sort of a jet bike exhaust. On the third day, it is the, whatever the guns the Wraith Knights use, not the Wraith Knights, the Wraith Constructs. Go. <laughs> On the fourth day of the Advent Engine, we got clearly an Eldar foot perched upon the top of a little piece of Eldar architecture. I'm assuming this is gonna be new Eldar Rangers, which we desperately need, especially for Kill Team, because Rangers are very good in Kill Team. On the fifth day of the Advent Engine, they didn't have anything to show off. And so they just used a little bit of like flavor text. Only in defeat will you know victory. Probably because the Eldar get defeated a lot. I mean, they used to be the, you know, dominant force in the galaxy. And now they're just one of the fringe aliens that are trying to destroy the imp Imperium of mankind. But they got right back on track with day six. And it is a backpack. Or actually, it's the it's the lack of a backpack. It is ah, it might be a warlocks. You can see like two tubes running from the back of an Eldar robe. Eldar's the, the warlocks wear robes. And so you can see two little connection ports and one of them has one cord running to it. So I, I think that this is probably new warlocks. I don't know. This one is a little is a little bit more mysterious. Although in no in there is no doubt that it is an Eldar something. On day seven, we got a brand new looking Eldar gun. It looks a lot like one of the Dark Eldar Furies guns. I forget the names of their unique war gear, but it looks it looks like one. Of, it looks more like a of a two handed long gun. But again, it looks dope and very Eldar. And then. On the final day, I mean, it must be an Archon. It's 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 a headdress. It is just the entirety of an Eldar headdress, and it is super duper cool. Very Ruminel, Rumin, Lumineth, very Lumineth Realm Lords style, but it is super duper cool. But yeah, uh, this is amazing. It's very cool to get some Eldar stuff. And I really hope that we go through all 12 days of Advent engine, and then we get a whole bunch of new orc models. I think I would love to see them troll the Eldar players just a little bit more because, you know, the Eldar players very reasonably are upset that they never get anything ever, ever. You know, they, they got some really, really cool models back in, you know, the, the you know, when was the last Eldar model ever? It has been a long, long ass time. But basically, you know, 20, 20 years, let's say, that, that you haven't gotten proper upgraded models. New armies have come out before the Eldar have gotten an update. And so I just want just a little bit more insult to injury. And how about we redo? How, how, about, the, how about we give the, the Space Marines the love that they really deserve? We haven't had a Primaris Lieutenant in weeks. I mean, isn't that kind of sad? We really, I think one or two more Primaris Lieutenants and then we finally come out with all the Eldar stuff. That, that would be what I would do. But that is the Advent Engine and it is super cool and I can't wait to see Eldar stuff. I'm not the biggest fan of the Eldar, 
But it totally could be just because the models are old and ancient, and I've actually built an entire Eldar army on commission, so I've actually experienced a lot of the kits and painting and building them. They just, they just don't do as much for me as, as my armies, like the Necrons and the Space Marines and the Orcs and the Gene Stealer cults. Those are, those I enjoy a little bit more. But we'll see, maybe if the new Eldar are mega dope, maybe it'll be time to dip my toes into the elves? That didn't come out right. So maybe, maybe it'll be time to try out the elves a little. Maybe it'll, it'll be time to get some, some elves all up on me. But in some more eons of battle news, we are going to be doing a AMA and ask me anything, I guess ask us anything, an AUA, an AUA, eh, uh, eh, ask us anything. And that video will be coming out on the 29th of December. Remember, we do stream every night from 9 to 10 p.m. Central Time, so you can feel free to pop into one of those and ask us things live. That's really, really fun. But I know that not everybody likes to come to the streams or watch the VODs, and it's nice to have that information available on our YouTube channel. So if you have any questions for us, feel free to leave them for us. Uh, in you could do it in Discord, or you can do it in the, in the comment section of this video. Just say AMA question, and then your question, and you can ask us anything. And if it's just completely crazy, if it's completely crazy, we won't answer it. But if it's truly crazy, we will definitely answer it. So feel free to leave questions for that in the comments below. And again, that's going to come out on the 29th of December. So you, you know, it's a little, it's a little sneak peek of the, uh, of the video release schedule for you guys. And talking about the videos, if you like the videos we make and you want more, the best way to support us is by becoming a member of our Patreon. Over there, you're going to get access to some behind the scenes, voting all models I paint live here on YouTube, a live hobby hangout every week, some terrain STLs, and more. But with that said, that is what I've been working on this week, and now it is time to move on to the story portion of this show. This is a show called Models and Memories, and it is about the memories associated with models, and not necessarily just models, but stuff. And this week, I want to talk about some stuff. I want to talk about the good old fashioned airbrush. These are my two airbrushes right now, a Harder and Steinbeck Infinity CR Plus, which is unbelievably amazing, and a good old Badger Patriot 105. And before these airbrushes, I had a Neo 4 Iwata Gravity Feed which was a very good airbrush. And then before that, I had a China Special, a $20 eBay airbrush, and they all served a purpose. And that purpose was to get me a little bit more experienced with the airbrush. Are airbrushes essential tools for wargamers? No. But I think, I think if you want to paint armies and kind of have a sprawling collection, I think that the airbrush is, to is a total game changer. You can do so many interesting things with the airbrush, but airbrushes are also a big pain in the butt. They're very finicky. They're very expensive. They're tricky to use. They have a steep learning curve. So I, I definitely can't say that they are for everybody, but I can't imagine painting without using the airbrush. And I've had, I've had, definitely had times in my painting career where I've had ups and downs, where I'm using the airbrush a lot and I'm barely using it at all. And usually it also coincides with how well my airbrushes are behaving and really how well my airbrushes are behaving is directly related to how well am I taking care of my airbrushes? Cause there is a lot of maintenance when it comes to the airbrush. But I used my old $20 China brand airbrush for probably almost a year and it worked. It wasn't very, it was, it wasn't very good, but it felt amazing. Going from using regular old brushes to any airbrush was amazing. I was base coating. I was doing object source lighting. I was doing, I was doing gradients. It was so much fun. And then that, that, that airbrush broke. And so I got the Neo Fry Wada gravity feed dual action airbrush. I got it from a Hobby Lobby with a coupon. And that was a really, really good deal. I think I got it for $60. It was a pretty darn good deal. Currently, it retails for $82.75. No good. It is not that nice of an airbrush. It has a screw-on nozzle. You don't, you don't want to buy an airbrush with a screw-on nozzle. That is, that's not a sign of quality, is a, a screw-on nozzle. 
But that airbrush got me through years and years and years and was lovely and wonderful and it was a, a, a decent quality airbrush. But at that point, I was getting pretty darn good at painting and I really decided, you know what? I might as well go for gold and buy the most expensive airbrush I can buy. And that was the Harder and Steinbeck Infinity CR Plus. And this is a great airbrush. The fit and finish is impeccable. The, the needle nozzle setup is amazing. It only takes a couple turns to, to separate this. It is self, self-centering. It is really, really, really nice. And some of the, some of the add-ons it comes with are really, really nice. I love this little, little, I suppose it would be a condom piece. Um, this, this airbrush, the Badger Patriot that I'll get to, it comes with an actual condom, just a big rubber thing you're supposed to shove on the front to keep your, your needle safe. But this is actually just a really, really nice piece of milled uh, steel that you just boop. And now you can't possibly hurt the needle. Wonderful airbrush, shockingly overpriced. I don't know if it's overpriced. It probably is worth it for the fit and finish of these components, but the fit and finish of these components aren't gonna help you airbrush really at all. Like this is this, so you know, I used this for years and it was very, very, very good. I used, usually I used a 0.3 millimeter needle and nozzle setup and it worked beautifully. I sprayed lots, everything through this, primers, varnishes, paints, and it worked really, really, really nice. This airbrush does have a tendency to clog shut where paint will no longer come out. And so that was really, really frustrating because if it did clog, I had to rinse out the pot, get the paint out, swab the needle nozzle and then put it back together and then I was ready to rock and roll. And that'll happen with any airbrush, but it does seem to happen a fair bit with this one. And also uh, totally can be that I have a really, really bad habit of doing all of my mixing in the pot, which sets you up for any little tiny paint chunks that you're not aware of, either scooping it out of a Games Workshop pot or dripping it out of a Vallejo pot. Any little crumb of paint that gets in there is going to get, it's going to make its way, because it's heavier than the rest of the paint, it's gonna fall down and make its way into your needle nozzle and cause some clogs. Really, one way that I found to help myself out is to make is to mix up the paint in a separate container and then like roll it around because at that point the, the heavy particulate is gonna settle and then pouring it in, that helps a lot but often I'm too lazy. And so I just drip, drip paint, drip, drip water, back, back pressure mix, and then spray away. But I was starting to use my airbrush a lot less because I knew that this is a little bit of a clog machine and, uh, and I, didn't, I didn't love reaching for it. So I decided to pick myself up a much cheaper airbrush in the Badger Patriot 105. This is a classic, a staple, a workhorse of an airbrush, and I absolutely love it. The fit and finish is, it's not nearly as good as this, but I think that is fine. Cause some of the things it does have are really, really, really nice. The, it still has a self centering nozzle, which is really, really nice. And it stuck cause I didn't clean it. But uh, imagine a self centering nozzle. Um, some things that are kind of frustrating is Yeah, on the Harder and Steinbeck, the the front end comes to a rounded a rounded front, and that makes cl uh, clearing off tip dry super easy. Usually, I'll just grab my shirt and just give it a little rub, and that'll take care of any tip dry tip dry or any sort of buildup of paint on the front of the airbrush. Or I have an old toothbrush, and I'll wet the toothbrush and just give the front of the airbrush a quick scrub, and that'll take care of any clumpages on the front of this. The Badger has a flat cup shaped face and that really becomes a bummer. In longer airbrushing sessions, this will become gunked up with paints and then I really have to scrub and scrub and scrub to get the paints out of there. Um, really, that's that's the only real complaint I have. Uh, it's, a no, it's a little annoying that it takes like, you know, 10 turns to get the needle nozzle separated, whereas on the, the Harder and Steinbeck, it's like one full rotation and then it's off. It's just a, it's just a little fit and finish thing. 
Uh, one thing I really do like about the Badger though is the giant ass reservoir. It is super duper easy to get paint, a lot of paint in there, and it's really, really easy to get cleaning tools in there. The Harden Steinbeck, it's a little bit, it's a little bit hard to get cleaning supplies up into the tiny, tiny tip, or into the tiny reservoir. But I'd say of all the airbrushes I've used, I think the Badger Patriot would be the one I'd have the hardest time replacing. I really like this airbrush. I use it every day. I barely clean it. It's still doing great work for me. I've had to replace the needle and nozzle once in a little bit over a year of working with it, which is, I think that's perfectly fine because replacement parts for this airbrush are cheap. The needle is about five bucks and the nozzle is about four bucks. Not even a problem. I have, I bought, I overbought so that I have them ready for when they break. Whereas the Harder and Steinbeck, we're talking about like probably $25 for the needle and $25 for the nozzle. It's really expensive. And the, the airbrushes are wonderful. And I feel like the only way to really know about airbrushes is for me to have done what I did. Just try out a bunch of different, ty different types, different ones, learn how I use the airbrush and how I enjoy using the airbrush. I don't, I'm not a good, I'm not good at preparation and cleaning and this airbrush can handle it. This, this airbrush, I talked a lot about how this airbrush clogs shut. This airbrush clogs open, which is still a clog and is not helpful, but at least when, when the airbrush clogs open, I can just hose down whatever I'm working on and be done with it. Assuming that that's what I wanna do. If I wanna base coat or prime, just being clogged open is fine. If I wanna do detail work, obviously, clogging open is just as bad as clogging shut and I need to take it apart and clean it. But I really like the Badger Patriot. It is a really, really good airbrush. The, the Infinity is a wonderful airbrush, but I cannot recommend it because this airbrush is not 200 and some dollars more better than this airbrush. It's better, but it's not 200% better. But that those are my airbrushes. And I don't know if I'm gonna pick up more airbrushes. I feel like I got it all. I mean, maybe I'll try like a cheapy single action and make that like my prime machine. Especially if I can find an airbrush that's like wildly easy to clean. Like maybe even like a baby spray gun could be helpful. But other than that, I think the Badger, my one-two punch of the Badger for my Anything yucky I put in the badger, varnishes, primers, and then a lot of my fine detail, I use my Infinity. But those are my airbrushes, and those are the airbrushes I really, really like. I have some videos on these airbrushes, one that's called, Do You Need an Airbrush? Where I talk about airbrushing in a general sense, and then I have a video called, I Don't Suck at Airbrushing Anymore, where I talk exactly about these airbrushes and how I use them and the compressors that I've used in the past. So if you want to know more about airbrushing, please check out those videos, but, I like airbrushing. I can't imagine not using the airbrush a lot for painting. They're super, super wonderful and super helpful. But that is my memory for this week, my wonderful experiences with my airbrushes. And that brings this episode to, of Models and Memories to a close. Now it's time for the real star of the show, this week's EOB Complete Submissions. We put out a challenge to our community to send us before and after photos of their recently finished models to be immortalized in our videos. If you want to join in the fun, you can submit a before and after photo of your painted mini to our Discord server, which you can find in the description below, or you can post it to Instagram with the hashtag EOBcomplete. Without further ado, let's look at and get inspired by what the folks have finished this week. Some Cruel Boys by Echo999, some Stormcast Sequiturs by Alex Mays 678 a Bander Hob in Sexy Cat Costume by Decimation, a Custom Orc Warboss in Mega Armor by Unity, a Terminator Chaplain Tarentus by Mike Newtype, a Primaris Lieutenant by Arm Smash, a Lot of Seraphon Skinks by Tonic Chipmunk, an Old School Sister of Battle by Mandy, an Orc Sniper Boy by Black Lung Raider, a Terminator Sorcerer by Tenjin, a Black Templar Sword Brotherin by Chew Toy 9696, an Orc Warboss in Mega Armor by Steel Blue One, an Orc Death Copta by Dire, a Primaris Pin by Takoshi Lucero, a Star Wars Interrogator Droid by Khan Industries, a Big Ol' Monster by Fo Show, some Skitari by Sentinel5678, a Blade Guard Veteran by CJ Boy, a Custom Chaos Dreadnought by Nurgle's Chosen Wog, a Black Templar Kitbash by Quintus, a Zangor by Synapsoplasm, 
a squad of Primaris Infiltrators by Dark Wooly, a Loyalist Death Guard Chaplain by Just Cruisin, some Dothraki Veterans by Numenor, a squad of Space Marine Devastators by Brother Captain Brutus, a Primaris Executioner Tank by Backup1452, a Rusty Cryptothrall by Cubicle Lemming 9 a Star Wars Legion Phase 1 Clone Trooper by Ski the Madman, and a Gene Sealer Cult Icon Ward by Darth Jig. Congratulations to everyone for a job well done. It's no small feat to get paint on minis and you all should feel really proud. Nothing gets the hobby juices flowing like finishing a project, and we all thank you for sharing your work, motivating us and the hobby community to paint our plastic. Thanks for sharing.